all right guys um, welcome back today we will see how to configure spring fox swagger 3 with spring boot application i will make use of the same example uh, which i uh, used for configuring in memory s2 database so let's get started okay so in earlier version of spring fox swagger 2 we were using spring fox swagger 2 dependency and spring fox swagger ui dependency but now in spring fox swagger 3 we no longer need this dependency but we will need a spring boot spring fox boot starter dependency so we will use that so let's remove those uh, older dependencies and we will do the maven clean install all right the build has been successful let's see the configuration for swagger 3 and for that we will create a configuration package a config package and a swagger config class and this class will conceive will hold a docket configuration okay and this will return a docket instance and it will hold a documentation type of swagger 2 select apis now the request handler selector configuration we need in the APIs property uh, in the input parameter. So for the time being, we will uh, use a simple request handler selector. Request handler selectors dot any, and then we will do the path configuration. Path parameters. sorry path selectors so these two properties tells exactly where our uh, api stays like the where exactly the controller class configuration begins that request mapping url should be configured in this path but now we have mentioned any so no matter where the project and uh, no matter where the controller resides so this swagger configuration will automatically do the component scanning kind of thing and it will uh, take the controller accordingly so we don't need to explicitly mention uh, from which api handler we need to scan the controllers uh, for our swagger tree so for the timing we have mentioned any now at the at the end we will mention build and this is how we will return a docket object and since uh, uh, the spring container will instantiate the docket so we will use at the red bean okay so another one thing in spring fox swagger 3 we no longer need enable swagger 2 annotation this is only for the spring fox swagger 2 version from version 3 onwards we we will not need enable swagger 2 annotation all right so next thing let's start this application and let's see how the swagger uh, ui is coming for product controller all right guys while starting the spring fox swagger application uh, we encountered some null pointer exception and the primary reason is we missed at the rate configuration and also there is another one annotation we need to add enable web mvc okay so net so let's restart this application okay the application has been started 
Now let's access the UI. For that, we need to go to this URL, uh, localhost 8080 swagger hyphen UI slash index.html. If all the configurations are correct, we will be able to get the URL mapping accordingly. And now let's start the H2 database as well. So the JDBC URL, as I mentioned last time, it will be the same as configured in our application properties. Let's quickly review that. In application properties, this JDBC URL is H2 M JDBC H2 MEM test DB. This is our database. And admin is our username. One, two, three is the password. So you just have to give the proper connection properties. One, two, three is my password. Once I log in, I see the product table as well. So uh, Spring does the, uh, sorry, Hibernate. JPA does the, you know, database creation based on our entity mapping. Let's see how many records we have. We have no records, so we are good. So now let's insert one record into this product table. For this, we need to add one value called SS as a product name. Product ID is zero if you keep or if you don't keep, it doesn't matter because it will anyhow, you know, generate one uh, product ID once the record has been added successfully into the database. So now the status code is 200. Let's see, we have the record available or not. Yes, we have. All right, so the swagger is working absolutely fine. Now let's get the record which I have inserted. Get all. And we got the record. Let's delete the record. Product ID is one. Execute. 200 successful. Now go to H2, refresh, and there is no record. All right, so, so far so good. We saw a very simple example how to configure Swagger 3 with Spring Boot application. Now we will see how to add a custom request header into the Swagger. So what I basically mean to say is, what if along with this product ID, if we want a specific product, uh, a specific request header along with each and every request, Okay, the request header will be common to all the endpoints and we will see how to add that custom uh, request header and we will see how to consume that custom request header in our application. So let's get started. So now go to the configuration class again, which is Swagger config. And to add a custom header, we have a method called get sorry, uh, in, before select method, we need to call global request parameters. Okay, this method will accept all the connect, all the uh, configurations for our request header, custom request header. So let's create a method, custom request header. And obviously we have to create this method This method returns some list of request parameter. Method name is custom request header. And this will return list of request parameters. Okay. So 
So to get the request parameter instance, we will take the help of request parameter builder. Okay. And request parameter builder has, you know, all the properties such as in property. This parameter type should be a header request parameter. So the parameter type should be header. Then name. custom parameter next required let's say this is required for all the parameter this is not an optional field so this is true next is query which is very important query needs a parameter simple parameter specification builder as a property so for simplification we will use the lambda function parameter then param dot model model scalar model scalar model property tells what kind of parameter this is this custom parameter is going to be so if we need a string parameter in the scalar model we have to pass the scalar type scalar type as a string Okay, so now all the properties configuration has been done. So now since we need a request parameter object, we have to invoke build method, then our exception will be gone. So okay, so custom, para custom request header will return a request parameter that request parameter will be handle through docket. So let's restart the Spring Boot application. All right, the Spring Boot application has been started. And let's see how this custom parameter is coming in the Swagger UI. So let's refresh. Okay, this custom parameter is coming. And we will see how the request is also going. So I'm opening the, uh, the uh, network tab. And I will again start by the post method. Custom parameter, some dummy value I'm passing because this is a required field. As of now, we are not uh, we are not accepting this custom parameter in our controller class, but still we are sending as it is a, a mandatory field. Some dummy value again I'm passing. Now guys, let's see, caref uh, just see this carefully. Now if I execute, we will get this error. Type error, fail to execute, fetch. And just observe after colon what is mentioned, invalid name. When you see this kind of error, which means there is something wrong in the name property you have configured in Swagger 3. Let's jump into the configuration, Swagger config. Now observe the name property. Here, it is saying the invalid name, which means we this name property cannot have a white space separated words. It should be a single word. Either you pass underscore or camel case, but it has to be a single word by the way. Okay. So for the timing, I'm using an underscore, restarting the application and we will see that again. Okay, so let's refresh the application, Swagger UI, and uh, we will see, okay, custom parameter is coming fine. Now let's add again, custom parameter, some dummy value I'm passing for the time being. Okay, this time the error has gone, okay. In the netto tab also, if you see, save or update method has been called. Okay, now let's see in the H2 database, John is coming. Okay. Now let's consume 
this custom header. Uh, I'm going to call get all method and in only in one place I will I'll show you how to consume it. I'm not going to do in all the places. Accepting custom header. Okay, how to how to consume? For that we need a HTTP servlet request as an input parameter to get all method in our product controller. Then we will call request dot get header, and you have to pass the exact same name which is coming in the request header. So the save and update method was passing a custom header, right? let's see this custom parameter okay the same thing custom parameter this is also coming in the URL custom parameter is 23 so we will copy paste in the product controller custom parameter okay and we will restart the Spring Boot application Okay, the application has been started. So obviously we need to save another record to get all the, uh, to execute get all method. John 11 is now Uh, saved into the database. Let's see that. John 11 is coming. Let's go to the get method. Try out. I'm passing the custom parameter with some dummy value. Now execute. Okay, this has been successfully worked. We got the John 11 as a response and response HTTP status is 200 and let's see the custom parameter is printed in the console log or not accepting custom header 111 yes this is working thank you so much guys stay tuned for more videos thank you so much